Welcome to my channel, my name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on most Wednesdays and Fridays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today we're gonna to talk about the Land Cruiser, the Model T, but real quick about the 356. So the 356, I'm still waiting on the windshield, uh, but I did have to, I had to cancel an order for the one windshield I had because it's on back order for another month, and I was able to get a tinted windshield um, that should be able to get here within the next week or so. With the holidays, it's going to be a little bit slower. But hopefully I'm going to have that windshield within the next week or two. Um, and then I'll be able to bring the 356 back in here uh, and do the final adjustments on the roof and start putting the windows in. Uh, I also ordered some seat covers. Um, you may have seen in a previous video, I did get some seats for the car, but they're the wrong color. So I should have the seat covers soon. So I may do a video soon on that, on how to uh, recover the seats. Uh, but anyway... Onto the Land Cruiser. So, if you watched my last video on the Land Cruiser, you would have seen that I got this rear sill in, um, and I also patched several holes around here, uh, and then some small holes here. I still need to patch this big um, hole, but I'm gonna do that when I take this upper um, fender out. Um, because that cut is right there. And I want to be able to clean up both sides of that weld. So that's going to be a lot easier when this is gone. So once this is out, then I can do this patch. And also I have a lot of cleanup that I'm going to do here with the hammer and dolly and the grinder and get all this um, looking good. And then I can put this new upper inner fender weld in. Um, kind of a quick note about these fender welds. I ordered these from Cool Cruisers. And when you order them, there's different links for different years, and I think it even gave the option to specify the exact length of it. I'm not positive. And then they made these. It took a little while for the order to be shipped because they actually made this after I ordered it. So I could have measured this and got it ordered um, and made to fit exactly, but I didn't do that. I ordered it based on the year. Um, and what you can see here is I've got probably a half inch gap. It's going to be between a quarter inch to a half inch gap by the time this panel's exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, but it doesn't fit flush. So I'm going to have to address that. I may uh, cut this in some area and extend it back. Um, but I'm going to have to make some kind of patch for that to make that fit exactly. Um, I should be able to do it and grind it down and, and maybe use a tiny bit of filler on it or something. You shouldn't be able to tell when it's done. Um, but that is something to note. So if you're going to order these, uh, it's a good idea to measure this first. I mean, it's kind of hard because there's a rounded edge here and we're talking about a quarter of an inch. So, you know, I don't know, maybe measuring it wouldn't have helped much. Um, but I, I do like the quality of this panel. Um, it's just a little bit short. And so I'm assuming it's going to be the same when I get to that side. So I'm going to have to address both of those issues. But, um, but basically, this still came out really good. I'm very happy with how this came out. I still have some more cleaning to do on it, especially on the uh, the underside here. You can see where the welds have come through. So I'm going to clean all of that. Um, I'm actually going to do a little bit more welding, I think, under here. But then I'll clean that up. Um, and then I will eventually be coating it all with the POR15, just like I did the rest of the bottom. Uh, and I'm also going to be putting some seam sealer around the edges to hopefully prevent it from rusting um, again. But I did use weld through primer on all the, the surfaces that I can no longer get to. So hopefully that's gonna be good enough. Um, but yeah, I'll do my best to seal that and make sure that it doesn't rust um, again, at least not quickly. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the progress on this. The next video I believe is going to be this quarter panel. Um, like I mentioned, that inner fender well, I've got to work on that, but I, I don't plan on mounting that until after this is mounted, I think, anyway. So, probably the next video will be me doing the final adjustments on this panel, because now that that inner support is there, I can actually securely attach it to that, and I can weld it all around the edges. Um, and then I'm going to have to do a lot of work on this area, and then also this area here, because this panel, like, like I mentioned before, it's just not very good quality. So I've got to repair those. Um, and my plan is, I've been using the MIG welder 
you know, for the patches and stuff. And that's fine because I can access the back of that and I can clean up the weld. But the MIG welder I'm using, I'm just using a flux core um, welding rod. So it's good actually for welding. Even if there's a little bit of rust, it welds right over it, no problem. Uh, the problem is I think it seems to, it's not a very clean weld. And so it's going to rust, I think, sooner. So my plan is to try to um, TIG weld this whole seam here because this seam lands on top of um, this piece of metal here. So you can't get to the back side of that weld. Once it's welded, it's welded. You can't, you know, you can't access it to clean it up. So I want this weld to be as clean as possible. So I will do a really good job of prepping it and getting rid of any rust. Um, and then I'll try to TIG weld that whole thing. But that's a really long uh, TIG weld. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Um, so like I said, that'll probably be the next video. Uh, I also, I got this stuff that I'm gonna try. You can spray this stuff inside of the frame. It has this hose that attaches to it. And there's, you can't see it now with this panel on here, but this, this tube here, this square tube runs the length of the Land Cruiser. And once I put this panel on, there won't be any way to access that again. So now that I have access to it, I'm gonna try to get a longer hose for that spray can. Then I'm gonna try to spray the whole inside of that tube to coat it and protect it um, before I weld this panel on. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the Land Cruiser. Uh, the Model T, you can see I've got some stuff going on down here. I'm working on rebuilding the, um, the coil box that mounts on the firewall. But um, so we can talk about the Model T real quick. You can see here, this is, this is the coil box. Um, and then I don't have the old coils out here right now, but I have replacement coils anyway. So um, the Model T, in my last video, you would have seen that I pulled the engine apart some more. I took the pistons out and the valves out and there were some issues with the valve seats. So I've dropped the engine off at the machine shop. Um, and a few of you commented that the valves in the engine, the existing valves are two piece valves and that they fail often uh, and that I should replace them. And luckily you let me know soon enough that I was able to uh, stop the machine shop before they got to work with those valves. And I've ordered a new set of valves and springs and even new valve seats in case they need them. But so um, that's gonna set that back a little bit, probably a week or two, because now I've gotta wait for those parts, which will take about a week. And then it'll be about another week probably for the machine shop to get it done. Um, so while the engine is at the machine shop getting the valves redone, I've been working on uh, the engine bay. So the next video for this is going to be me cleaning up this engine bay, getting the firewall back in, um, getting I think a lot of the electrical stuff back in and ready. Um, but so as you can see here, I've started some of the paint. I've got the firewall out. Um, so. I'm making good progress um, with the Model T. Um, and I'm really excited. I have a lot of, uh, like all the new wiring and a lot of cool stuff that I'm, I'm looking forward to putting in to the engine bay. It's going to look really cool, I think. I'm gonna, I love the fact that the outside is going to look so old, but when you open the hood, the engine's going to just look brand new. Everything in there is going to look brand new. Um, so anyway, that's the Model T. Um, so like I said, the next video will be cleaning up this engine bay. After that, um, I still have to take off this front end. I've ordered some parts, like the new gear for the speedometer, and then I think I already have the bushings for this that need to be replaced. Um, but I need to pull this off, clean it up, and paint that. So I don't know if that will be a video of its own, um, especially since I'm waiting on the engine to come back from the machine shop, or if maybe I'll just move on um, to do something else for a video. Maybe that'll be a 356 video, or maybe even the Beetle. Um, for next week but anyway i will hopefully still get two videos out next week even though it's the holidays i'll definitely have at least one but hopefully i'll have two out so um that's it for the model t and that's it for the land cruiser making good progress on both of those and then like i said hopefully i'll be making progress on the 356 again very soon so that's it for this week thanks for watching guys and if you haven't already please consider subscribing bye